Hi everyone, it's Melissa with The Creative Season. This week we're continuing to paint flowers that are near me. Now we're moving a little bit away from the American River Trail, but not too far away. The lavender have been popping up all over the place and there's bees circling around them. It's such a sign of spring. I love the fragrance. I love the bright colors. So pick up some green, some dioxazine purple, a little bit of pink or magenta, and we're gonna create these really fun easy watercolors. It was so relaxing to take about 15 minutes and paint and I hope you really enjoy the project and also we're going to talk a little bit about National Letter Ready Month which is all of April. Hi everyone. Well welcome back. We are at another week of painting. We're moving a little bit away from the American River Trail this week and we are going um, just a little bit outside. I've, there's been lavender everywhere and so I saw some more this morning. I was snapping a few pictures and I thought okay I'm going to come home. We're going to paint lavender this week and okay be, before we go I want to let you know too if you don't have any lavender of your own um, you can also do a Google image search or search on Pinterest. You're going to notice uh, uh, the lavender there is all sorts of like different colors of purple shades of lavender and so I've got I'm gonna be using a dioxazine purple today but I'm also gonna be throwing in some pink for some of my shades and you can see how that really just starts to blend in those colors isn't that pretty and then also I do have that violet mauve over here so I'm probably gonna be using a little bit of that and that's gonna go really really nicely and let me bring this back in so you can see this just a little bit more clear here. I also have a green, so I'm going to be using my hooker's green today, and I'm going to be using, you can see how nice that is, right, against these colors. So I'll most likely as well be taking a little bit of the purple and mixing it in that green, and this is um, a great way to add in darker colors to your green without pulling in another green or a brown or something like that. So I can even just add a little bit of color and you can see with that purple to the green I can really deepen it up in intensity and we can create just a great wonderful shade of color so let's go you'll also see I think there's over 70 different kinds of lavender so there's lots of different um, kinds so I have like a close-up right here of lavender and you'll also see I've been sketching out almost like um, over here I have kind of on this one I have more of like the lavender bush and over here as well is a bit more of a lavender bush um, I was at a friend's home yesterday and she had lavender so very inspired you'll notice some lavender has like flowers on it which is really interesting too so I'm going to start actually with on this one and adding in little bits of pink also, the reason we're painting, you'll notice we're painting small this week. I'm going to be inserting these into cards because it is National Letter Writing Month. April is National Letter Writing Month, so I have a goal. I have some. I want to write out a certain amount of letters. My goal is to write seven each week, starting this week, even though it's the whole month. Last week was filled with Easter preparation, and so I knew that I wasn't going to, uh, it was just going to be unreasonable last week. So this week I have a goal of mailing out seven letters, and I'll be doing, I think, a, a bit of a, I might do a challenge on Instagram and seeing who else might join me in National Letter Writing Month of reconnecting with friends and family via letter. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead now, I'm going to pick up the dioxazine purple, and I am going to just start laying that in over it. And you don't even have to get tons of it. If you want your purple to be a little bit lighter, just add some more water to it. And I'm going to start moving it around. And on this particular lavender, it was actually flowery, which I think is so pretty. So I was also including some of those flowers. And there was just a bit, I think, of like yellow in the flower so I'll add just a hint of yellow but I want to let it dry because I don't want that yellow to merge. I'm going to come back in here and I'm just as you can see I'm just letting that purple almost just dance in here and moving around in here. I'm not too focused on going really dark and this is just really really fun and you know I noticed I've never seen like pink lavender but I just I wanted a pink base with this particular one I think it gives a little bit more depth of color and we start to special in the lavender that's not like a dark purple it really the, the lavender I saw this morning really was um, a lighter a lighter color so just moving around okay so now that I have that I'm gonna go ahead and pull in my green and we're gonna do some different styles 
in each painting. And I have that fourth one blank because I thought, well, I may, I may decide what I like best and then I'll come back later and create that fourth one. So I'm gonna come over here just a little bit with my green and I'm gonna pull this down. You'll notice too, making sure that you can see this okay, I am not worried about coloring everything in, right? We're not concerned about that. We wanna leave a little bit of that white to showing how it is, the color is kind of dancing, dancing around. Now that looks really fun. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry for just a minute. I'm gonna move over to this one and I am just gonna go ahead. Now on this bush that I saw this morning, which was what this is inspired after, um, the lavender actually had a lot of greenery on it. Some lavender has more than others, so that's why it's fun to look at those distinguishing characteristics. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in all of my green over here and just let that dry for a second. And then I'm gonna come back in and add in some color. I'm gonna move that down and then come up here. And you'll notice that I had written lavender on a couple of these. I just wanted to add that. I thought it'd be fun to almost create like one of those botanical cards that has the name of the flower on it. And I'm gonna just move this around. I have to say it was really nice because there was quite a few bees around the lavender this morning. And we've had, I think everywhere, there's just been a concern with so, so many bees dying and the bee population decreasing for a variety of reasons. It was great to hear them buzzing. And then I was out walking yesterday and it, one of those flowering trees also had tons of bees. So that was fabulous. You'll notice too, I am using a nice round brush with a tip that fine tip, which allows me to, um, you know, create a really nice edge, as long as my there's not too much paint saturated down here. Okay, so that looks lovely. Now I think on this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some green and I'm gonna be a little bit more bold here and I'm gonna actually do a bit of a green wash. I'm gonna pick in some more water here and I'm not gonna touch the flowers. And then on the another one, I'm gonna do a lavender wash. Just a way to, a little different style. And I'm gonna go ahead and go nice and deep over here. Because we're using complementary colors too, I know that if a little bit of the color bleeds in, it's not going to make a muddy mess. Example, if it, unless it, you know, if we were using pink and brown, that, oh, or I'm sorry, pink and, pink and green, that really can. So like on this, this lavender, I'm not gonna use any pink. I'm only gonna use the purple. We're gonna give that just a bit of time to dry. Add a little bit darker here. What I can also do with this one down here is I'm gonna go ahead and also create a little bit of that wash, but what I'm gonna do differently is I'm gonna take some purple as if there's purple in the back as well, and I'm gonna do a wash back over here with purple and then have the green come and meet it. And of course you could always leave it white. You don't have to leave that color in like I'm gonna do. Just something fun, a little bit different. I like to play with new styles. Let that green move up here and then coming around. Try not to let your hand set down, settle down into any of the other paintings. So keep your wrist up as you paint have good ergonomics, right? <laughs> that way our wrist will stay healthy and our paint won't get smeared. So I'm just going in here nice and soft. And then I'll come down here, maybe a little bit darker, right over here. Okay, that looks nice. Again, it's kind of supposed to look like it's fading out. Now I'm gonna come over here now, I'm gonna start adding in some of the mauve. In fact, I think actually I'll go right up here and I'm gonna just start creating some mauve up here. Not even doing all of them, I'm just kind of dancing around. On these guys that I had seen, they almost had these big hats they were wearing. I'm gonna grab some purple and add in some purple. Kind of just let the colors do what they wanna do. 
Again, I'm almost just kind of dropping the paint onto this really light sketch. You could even do this the opposite way of where you paint first and then sketch. And Oh, I just got some purple in there, but you know what? I'm not even too bothered by that. What I might end up doing with that one is I'll just sketch in another lavender right there. So not too big of a deal. Coming up over here, taking that purple, just moving this around. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that mauve and just drop a little bit of that in there too. And since that's kind of flowing too, I'm just gonna make another one right here after that, after that dries. We will fix that. There's so much with watercolor that is fixable. And that's bleeding into it a little bit, but I'm not worried about that at all. Now, if you wanna prevent that, you just let it all dry first and then you add in your color. But we are just living dangerously as we paint in the margins of our lives, right? If you only have 15 minutes to paint, we can make that work. And that's what these weekly Wednesday projects are all about. Now I'm gonna come back in here and I am gonna add a bit more color and adding that little bit more magenta in there right in these guys. That looks nice, right? And I'm gonna take a little bit more pink too. That looks good. Just adding a little bit more color here to these particular ones, a little bit over here. Lovely. Making them nice and bold. Now, I know I had a little bit of yellow. I don't even want to add that yet, though, because I really don't want that yellow to blend, to blend in. Now, I'm going to come back over here and taking that magenta, I'm just going to dabble that in. Again, just kind of setting it down really loose. Just kind of letting the direction guide me, keeping my wrist up so it doesn't sit on the other painting. I'm going to come and grab some purple and just let that settle in in a few places so it can create some of that depth. And are these colors just beautiful? They just sing of spring. They're very rich. The magenta is a bit more in the fall palette, but I think with these colors, it, it really goes. There's a brightness to it that, that works when I blend it in. Okay, that's a bit dark with my, my violet. That was a bit heavy with the, I'm sorry, the, the purple. So I will actually come back and what I'm gonna do with that is I will take a dry brush and I'm just gonna lift a bit off. So this is always my, my trick with my dry brush is I will just lift up, there we go, and just spread that love around, just like that. I'll take a little bit of that magenta and dab that here. And I'm even going to take a little bit of that purple and just do a little bit more shaping here. Remember too, the purple will dry a little bit lighter than what it looks like going on, but it feels too dark or we have no white spots. Just take the tip of that dry brush and dip it in. And then sometimes I just use the excess and just move it in another flower. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush really, really good. I'm gonna take my cadmium yellow just a tad bit here. I'm just gonna do a dot on a couple of places where I had seen this color. I just, and then I'm gonna put it down on the stems too. So that way we've got a little bit of that yellow spread around. Okay, now on this guy for the background, I think I am gonna do a pink. And I'm gonna just let that pink move around here. Just really, really carefully, not letting it touch any of the flowers. I'm gonna get my, brush real wet. I'm going to dip it into the magenta. I'm going to go right over that pink. Isn't that beautiful? Such, such gorgeous colors coming right down by my stem here and moving that down. If that looks too dark, grab some water, move it around to the other side. That looks beautiful. I'm going to take some pink and drop it in and just let that pink go where it wants to go, moving up here, getting a little bit more water. I don't want it the same intensity everywhere. I want it maybe a little bit darker on one side as if that's maybe where the shadows are falling. 
and then moving it around. Again, being real careful. That's the nice thing about working with the small brush is you can just kind of go up and around. And also our, our paint is a little bit more dry, which it gives us a little bit more freedom, but be careful because some of those petals are still a bit wet. So this is all pa being painted on four by six paper and I'm using um, the Master's Touch pad, which you can find at Hobby Lobby. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Artist Loft, which you can find at Michael's. And there's one from Hobby Lobby. I kind of, whatever I'm shopping in, I just grab, I grab the um, four by six and they're both equally good products. Good paper, it's 140 pound watercolor paper. Okay, isn't this fun? So again, I'm gonna let this dry completely. I'm gonna turn this into a flower. I really like how these are coming out. Now with this, if you think to yourself, gosh, that's not quite as, it's, it looks a little bit harsh. It's as far as the, it's not blending as much as I want. I can always come down here. I add a little bit of the darker purple green, and then I can even just kind of move around in here. Pick some water up and just move that around too. Add it and you don't have to be as dark or as bold as I'm going. Again, just a little bit of a different look. And then I can also take a bit of that violet and just pop that in here. And that'll kind of help it all to sing and pull out some of the color that's coming in around it. Okay, you guys, this is really fun. And we pull it when we pull it off the paper after it dries, it's gonna look absolutely beautiful. All right, I hope you enjoyed painting lavender with me today. Go out and enjoy the spring day, and I will see you next Wednesday.